the Arabs have a saying Sayyid al Qawm Had Muhu. The leader of the people is the servant of the people. He's not their master, he's the servant of the people. Throughout history, there have been leaders, religious leaders, political leaders, military leaders, leaders of all kinds. But the most important leaders are the religious leaders, the prophets and messengers of God, who have brought guidance, who have brought message from the Almighty God, who have guided people on the right path, who have made people's life what it should be, decent, who have made citizens responsible, dependable and reliable. These leaders, the messengers and prophets of God, have got their own characters and characteristics, their norms and values. Leaders, and of course, what are these leaders like? Later in life, many, many people follow their example. Today in this lecture, talking about leadership, morality and uh, ethics in Nigeria, I would like to revisit the past. The purpose of history is to know the past in order to adjust the present and plan for the future. What was our past? What was Nigeria in the First Republic? How did we start? What were the leaders like? Those leaders of the First Republic were they had their weaknesses, they are human beings. Perfection is an attribute of God. Only God is perfect. But, comparatively speaking, those leaders, our founding fathers, were excellent. Dr. Namdi Azukri, Chief Abafemi Owalu, Sir Dauna of Soktu, Sir Abu Bakar Tafawa Balewa, Malam Aminu Kanu, J.S. Tarka, these were decent people. They were people, they were leaders that went into politics to serve as leaders should do and not to be served. To give but not to take. They were leaders that were concerned with the welfare of the people. Leaders who in spite of their political differences were at all times prepared to come together and unite and accommodate one another in the interest of the nation. These were leaders who are fairly honest. Honest. They did not go into politics to make money. No, they went there to serve. These were the leaders. Indeed, as a result of their good leadership in those days, there was a report in 1961 or 62 which said Nigeria was two other developing countries in the world would in 15 to 20 years join the industrialized nations of the world. The other two countries were India and Brazil. India and Brazil have made it today, haven't they? India is a nuclear power. India in the field of computer technology is in the forefront. India manufactures planes, builds ships. India produces more doctors than any country in the world today. India has made it. India had the same problems of Nigeria, ethnicity, religious bigotry, and so many, so many differences. And the population, the second largest population in the world. And yet they were able to overcome all those difficulties or all those problems and become what they are today because of the leadership. Brazil too did it. Brazil had the finest agricultural program in the world today. Brazil builds ships, Brazil manufactures planes, cars, bombs and all sorts of things. And incidentally, 
Brazil and Nigeria established their in defense industries the same year. <laughs> Our defense industries in Kaduna. What is it doing? Um, I, I'm told that that defense industry is, is producing only furniture. Leadership. When we started in the First Republic, under the leadership of Sir Abu Bakr Tafa Belewa, anywhere Nigerians went, they held their heads high. They were respected. They were admired. Today, as we go out, we hold our heads down in shame. We are afraid to hold our heads up. Leadership is wrong. What is happening today in Nigeria is not in our character. Nigeria was not like that before. Under the leadership of those good people, who were always prepared to place the national interest above their personal interest, Nigeria was making strides. We no longer have that kind of leadership. Nigeria, as a country, was decent, morally sound. We had the political clout that made us acceptable to all African countries. Today, as I keep saying, we are no longer what we were. The institution of family has broken down. Respect for elders and constituted authority that used to be a cardinal principle in our society is now at its lowest ebb. Honesty, why it does not pay, has become meaningless. Symptoms of revolt loom large in the horizon. In short, today, there is meaninglessness in philosophy, insecurity in polity, immorality in society, corruption in economy, frustration in art, and even lack of creativity in literature. <laughs> Things have fallen apart. Why? Bad leadership. People take the cue from their leaders. We are called all sorts of names. Nigeria is a very rich country. We have oil. But oil has become both a blessing and a curse. A blessing because we have got plenty of money from oil with which we can develop the country if we have the will. But a curse because it has brought a negative culture in us. The culture of extravagance. Unfortunately, we have now formed the habit of sending our girlfriends to do their hair in Paris, to do their shopping in London, to spend their holidays in New York. We compete in buying the boot cars for our girlfriends. We buy the latest, longest, and most luxurious American limousines, only to drive them on the rough, dusty roads of Nigeria. We build mansions and palaces in the midst of ghettos sometimes with no access roads to them, all with money stolen from oil money. Negative culture. People take the cue from their leaders. People take the cue from their leaders. We must have leaders. As far back as 1962, I remember, when I went to Baden University to give a convocation lecture, I foresaw two things. I said the trouble with Africa would be two. We would have two problems in Africa, leadership and the political system operating in Africa. Unless the leaders are good, decent, unless the leaders are honest, unless the leaders have the fear of God, unless the leaders have concern for the common man, Unless the leaders have vision, the future would be bad. The future would be bad. Nigeria is a great country, potentially. We need to work hard in order to realize the potential greatness of the country. And we need to have good leaders, leaders with these qualities. 
for this reason. I would like to see people borrowing or emulating our founding fathers and even going further back. Do I read the Sok II Caliphate when Sultan Muhammad Bello was the ruler or the leader? Dr. Baz, a German explorer, came to Nigeria and he toured extensively. And on his return home, he wrote, that I have been to a republic or to a domain or a caliphate where the people enjoy the benefits of the justice of their leader. He said, in that republic, were you to get an old woman and give her a golden pot filled with gold bars and ask her to take the pot from one end of the caliphate to the other, no matter how the distance in between, without an accomplice or somebody to escort her, she would deliver the pot to its destination without being stopped on the way to be robbed because of the justice of Muhammad Bello. So above all, a leader must be fair and just. Justice and fair play. Good leaders must, have, must be just and fair. For it is said, power can remain in the hands of an infidel if he is just and fair. But it will not remain in the hands of a believer if he is unfair and unjust. Justice. Behind every crisis in Nigeria and indeed anywhere in the world is injustice. Injustice. And it must be remembered that the world can never be governed by force. Let anybody who thinks that he can rule by force, let anybody who thinks he can rule by force, think again. The world can never be governed by force, never by fear, even never by power. In the end, what governs is the mind, what conquers is the spirit. And the weapons of governing the mind and conquering the spirit are justice, justice and fair play. Justice and fair play. Leaders must be just. Leaders must be fair. Leaders must have concern for their people. They must have the fear of God. Leaders must be people who will accept in public what they have accepted in secret. There must be people who look at a lot of the common men with the eyes of compatriots, not with the eyes of the privileged few. Leaders, not rulers. And in this, I would like to recommend or to tell you the qualities of leadership which the, which the real leaders, the prophets and messengers of God had. All of the messengers of God herded cattle or sheep or animals. They were herdsmen. Every single prophet and messenger of God was a herdsman. What is the herdsman like? Let us look at our herdsmen today. I want to give this example because it is what I know. There are herdsmen all over the world, all over Africa. But if you see the herdsman, the Fulani herdsman in Nigeria, you will see him in front of his cattle. Not behind the cattle. He is not driving them. He is in front, leading them. Hundreds of cattle would be following him. If he stops, they stop. If he jumps into the water, they all jump into the water. If he makes a sign, or blows his whistle, or flute, they will all disperse into the forest. If he wants them to come back, they will all return to him. Indeed, he even named some of them. If he calls any of the cows by its name, it will leave the herd and come to him. This cattle man, if during a rainy season, he takes shelter under a tree, the cattle will come and chase him away from under the tree and bring him into the open and make a circle around him. They fear that thunder may fall on the tree and kill their herdsman, their leader. 
these, these cattle, the animals they are, they are protecting their leader, they are following him, they are obeying him. Why? Why are they doing that? They are doing that because they realize that their herdsman, their leader, has sacrificed his life for them. He has sacrificed his comfort for them. He has sacrificed his health for them. For the herdsman sleeps where his cattle sleep. He does not take, take shelter in the town and leave his cattle or cows to sleep in the forest. He sleeps in their middle. And while they are asleep at night, he is half asleep. On hearing the cry of a hyena or a, or a leopard, trying to take out a single calf, he would rather die than allow that wild animal to take away his calf. The Fulani herdsman. If any of his cows get sick at night, he will go into the forest to get these leaves or that root to treat the, the animal. In the morning, his first thought is where to take his cattle to drink, where to, where to take them to graze. He takes care of them. These animals realize that these are the sacrifices that their leader is making for them, and therefore they obey him. If these cattle, the animals they are, would obey their leader because he is sacrificing everything for them, he cares, he looks after them, he's fair to them, he's just to them, how much more of human beings? If human leaders, if our leaders would be that, would have would cultivate these qualities and would have these qualities of the Fulani herdsmen, they would be obeyed, they would be followed. I therefore recommend the philosophy of the herdsman. It was this philosophy that when I would single out one leader in the first republic, the Sardana of Soktu, for example, made northern Nigeria one. During his time, under his leadership, all the different peoples in the north, irrespective of their tribe or religion or political inclination, came to realize themselves as one. They called themselves northerners. Why? Sardona religiously did not discriminate against anybody. His personal physician was a Christian, Dr. Isha Aoudou. His security officer, Dr. Sandy Aoni, was a Christian and a Yoruba man from Kaba. His next door neighbor was Michael Aoudou Buba, a Christian from Shandam in Plateau. His other neighbor was Mr. Ajayi from Kaba, a Yoruba and a Christian. Obute Obepa was from Idoma, a Christian. He was east of his house. All around him were people who are not House of Lanis or Muslims. He never discriminated against anybody as a leader. Indeed, there was a time when he went to the King's Way to do shopping and he met some students. He asked them what they were doing. They said they were window shopping. He told them to pick one item he would pay. He asked his servant to settle the bill, but the servant made a mistake and asked one of the boys, what religion are you following? From what part of the country do you come from? When the Sardana heard this, he turned around and said, What have you got to do with the religion or tribe? He is my son. That was a leader. He's my son. And again, so socially, if you went to Sardana's house in those days, you would see him in his sitting room, eating with his driver, his clerk, his secretary, his permanent secretary, and the ministers. He did not discriminate against anybody. Socially, we couldn't fault him. Economically, he used to tell us that you cannot run and at the same time be scratching your buttocks. If any of my ministers, he said, wants to go into business, he should resign. I will help him. But we cannot be a minister and a businessman at the same time. That my hope and prayer is that after my death I shall be remembered as having served my people worked for my people not as having accumulated money that was Sardona he believed in division of responsibility politically although Mala Amin Kano was Nepu NCNC Alliance and Tarka was UMBC Action Group Alliance yet 
they always came to Sardana and discussed matters concerning the North and the country generally. So we need leaders. And we need leaders that will listen and not feel bad when they are criticized. You are not perfect. As human beings, we have our weaknesses. I remember what President Zuma said about a year or two ago when I went to South Africa to receive an award, which I think I did not deserve. At all. God, people like so Abbasanja Chewaini, a great son of Africa. <laughs> eh? He is the great son of Africa, not my Tamar. Now, he made a statement that impressed me, and I won't sell this to our leaders. He said, Good leaders, when they deviate or falter, Expect ordinary citizens, the academicians and the media to blow the horn of warning. Such good leaders listen to and heed such warning. And they respond constructively. They do not see themselves as being above public criticisms. These are good leaders. What leaders with the philosophy of the herdsman, want leaders to emulate the philosophy of the Sardana, were we to adopt the philosophy of Sardana and work with it, would solve all of our problems, political, social, economic, and religious. Nigeria is a great country. Somebody said, if only we could unite and establish peace and stability in the next 15 years, we would come of age and we would be an economic force to be reckoned with but you need leaders to do that good leaders from whom we can emulate and that is why i keep praying and at the risk of repeating myself i will repeat my prayer because the, i'm being my gown is being pushed behind that time time is against me I will hope and pray, and I want us all to hope and pray for good leaders, not rulers. Good leadership, with the philosophy of the herdsman, with the philosophy of the messengers of God. Good leaders, with concern for the common man. May God grant that we may have such leaders. Leaders with the fear of God. Leaders who will not lie. Leaders who will accept in public what they have accepted in secret. Leaders not rulers. Leaders who will not steal. Leaders who are not corrupt. Leaders who look at the lot of the common men with the eyes of compatriots. Not with the eyes of the privileged few. Leaders not rulers. Leaders with a vision. Leaders who have fire in their bellies but humanity in their hearts. Fire in their bellies so that they may take unpleasant but necessary decisions, but humanity in their hearts so that in taking such decisions they may temper justice with mercy. <laughs> leaders, not rulers. Leaders who will know when they are no longer equal to the exigencies of their nation and will have the prudence of handing over before they forbid the admiration of their countrymen. May God grant that we may have such leaders.